Hey, and welcome to 8.2. We're going to be going over a few special circumstances when dealing with triangles, um, and as an extension of what we did yesterday with a few uh, trigonometric functions. Um, we're going to be answering three questions today. The first question we're going to be answering is, are there any special triangles that result in a non-terminating decimal that we can represent algebraically? Um, something that's not some infinitely long decimal um, and we'll take a little bit of a further look at that because it's not 100% true, but you'll see. Um, step two is, can we find an angle given two sides? So yesterday we had an angle and a side. Today we're going to be looking at if we have two sides and we want to find that angle. Um, we're going to be looking at that. And the last thing is what happens when we have negative side lengths. So most of you realize that any object that we have in three-dimensional uh, space has to have a positive length. So what happens when those links are negative? What does it mean? So let's go ahead and let's get started and let's take a look. Okay, so like we said, today is going to be section 8.2, which is special circumstances. Um, and like I said, we're gonna be answering those three questions is one, Are there special cases for right triangles? Two, um, can we find an angle given two sides? And three, um, how do we get negative side lengths? Okay, so those are the three questions that we're gonna be answering today. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start off with round one. So round one, let's take a look at a few examples. And yeah, let's title this. So special circumstances or special cases. Okay, so there are two types of special right triangles. Our first type, let's go ahead and let's draw this, is going to be what we call a 45-45-90 triangle, which means it is an isosceles triangle. These two sides are of equal length. These two angles are of equal length. 45 degrees, 45 degrees, 90 degrees. Let's go ahead and let's zoom in a little bit so that we can better see that. So we have two angles of 45 degrees and one central angle of 90 degrees. 45 and 45 make 90, plus 90, 180. So all angles within the triangle still equal 180. And we're gonna see that this has a special relationship of one, one, and the square root of two. Now again, per our first thing, special cases, we were talking about non-terminating decimals and how we can represent that. We can represent the square root of two with a radical symbol and a two. It's not something that we need to represent via a longer expression. So it's not one times this divided by this times the sine of this. It is an irrational number, which means we're either dealing with a triangle or with a circle. <clears throat> and so this is our 45, 45, 90 triangle. And let's take a look at how we would set up a relationship if we ran into those. So our first example would be if I have, let's say a triangle, let's put it in the same orientation, 45, and let's give it a length of two. And so that's all the information that we know. Now, the first thing that we can do is we can say, hey, I can plug in some values and say, the long way, say, okay, so the sign, or let's say, Sokoto, getting ahead of myself. Now with the 45, if I were to try and find this leg length, let's call that leg length A, that is opposite the 45 and I have the adjacent, which means I'd use the tangent. So the tangent of 45 degrees is equal to A over two, or I could multiply both sides by two to get rid of that and say 
2 times the tangent of 45 is equal to a, which would give me 2. And I could plug that in. So that's one way to do it. The other way to figure that out is I could use, let's say, with 45, I have the adjacent leg, so the leg that's touching it, and the hypotenuse. Adjacent hypotenuse is cosine. So I could say the cosine of 45 is equal to, let's call that C, so 2 over C. So what I do is I multiply both sides by C to get rid of it. No, you can't see what I'm writing. I'd multiply both sides by C to get rid of it. And then I would have C times the cosine of 45. I'd divide by the cosine of 45, which would get rid of those. And so C would equal two over the cosine of 45, which would be, I believe, 2 square root of 2, whatever that decimal is. And so that's the long way to do it. That's kind of what we did yesterday. But remember, this is a special right triangle. So the easier way to do it would be to look at, OK, if I have another 45, 45, 90, just like this one, that means that my case must be 45, 45, 90. If this is a one-to-one -one relationship, these are equal, which means these are equal. So my A immediately is equal to 2. I don't need to do anything. I know that I could work it out the long way and get that. The other way is I know if this is 1, that's whatever the side length is times the square root of 2. So it's 1 square root of 2. Well, if I have a 2 right here, it's going to be 2 square root of 2. So my C is 2 square root of 2, which is kind of how I cheated right here. I knew what the, uh, knew what the final answer is going to be. So that's a 45, 45, 90. Let's go ahead and let's take a look at a second example. Let's take a look at a 30, 60, 90. And if I have a 30, 60, 90, the relationship that we have right here is going to be opposite the 30 is one, opposite the 60 is the square root of three, and opposite by hypotenuse is two. So my 30, 60, 90 triangle has those relationships. And let's take a look at an example of how we can use this, maybe the faster way this time when we look at it. Let's take a look. Now, if I have a triangle, and again, I'm going to put it in the same orientation so that we can see how this works. And let's say I only know that that's 30, and I know that the hypotenuse is 6. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at over here, and I'm going to say, hey, 6 is to this side right here. I meant to do that in black. 6 is to this side length as 2 is to this side length. So let's just set up a proportion. 6 is to a as 2 is to 1. Basically, we're going to end up cutting 6 in half if you haven't already jumped forward with that. I can do this a longer way and multiply both sides by a. Gets rid of that. So 6 is to a. Divide both sides by 2. So 3 is equal to a. Again, we notice if this side is half of the hypotenuse, we know that side length is going to be half of this hypotenuse. Half of 6 is 3. Cool. Now let's find the other side length. Let's say B. So 6 is to B. Hypotenuse is to this bottom leg as this hypotenuse is to this bottom leg. So 2 is to the square root of 3. So I gotta do two steps. I'm gonna multiply both sides by b to get b out of the bottom. And I have six is equal to two b over the square root of three. Now from here, it's gonna take two steps to isolate my b. Multiply by square root of three, gets rid of that. So I have six square root of three is equal to two b. And then I'm gonna divide each side by two. 
which means that as we zoom in a little bit, six divided by two is gonna be three, square root of three is B. And so that's setting it up via a proportion. Um, but if we look at that a little, little further out, okay, so two, basically we're gonna look over at this one. So it's one times the square root of three. So it's gonna be whatever this is times the square root of three. What was our A? Three, so three square root of three. And we got three square root of three. So that checks out. And also we knew that this was 60 in case that's ever a question. So that's case one, or are there special circumstances? And the two special circumstances that we wanna go over are those two triangles, 45, 45, 90, and a 30, 60, 90. So now let's take a quick look at example or special circumstance number two. So that was special circumstance number one. Special circumstance number two is find an angle given two sides. So we wanna find an angle given two sides. So let's take a quick look at this. So our first example is going to be, let's draw a nice tall triangle. Has the right angle in there. We have hypotenuse length 55 and side length 51. I want to find what these two angles are. Now, what we're gonna to have to do is I'm gonna to have to label these angles. I'm gonna call this one A because it's opposite my A leg. And I'm gonna call this one B because it's opposite my B leg. And I'm gonna make them capital letters so that way if I ever need to go figure out what this B is, I'm not gonna get confused between angle B, which is capital, and leg B, which is lowercase. So let's take a look at figuring out what A would be given these two sides. Well, 51 is opposite and 55 is hypotenuse. So if I consult my Sokotoa, what deals with opposite and hypotenuse? Sorry, sine. So I know that for A, it's gonna be the sine of A is equal to the opposite 51 over the hypotenuse, which is 55. Now, I'm going to have to figure out with this A in here, what a lot of you would probably like to try and do is you'd like to divide both sides by sine, divide this by sine and have 51 divided by the sine of 55. Unfortunately, that's not the way these trig functions work. We're taking the sine of this angle. So how do we think we're going to flip these? If we have to invert these, this goes over here, this goes over here without using multiplication and division. Well, trig has this way. We're just gonna say, hey, I'm gonna take the inverse sine. And I'm gonna put the side lengths, 51 over 55, and I'm gonna pop my A outside. So there you go. So in order to invert these two, I literally take the inverse sine. I'm gonna plug that into a calculator, and I get A is equal to, roughly equal to, 68.01. So I know what my A is equal to, and that's in degrees. And so to find B, I'm going to use the same process. I'm going to flip it and find B. So let's look at what we have for B. B, I have the leg that is touching it, so the adjacent, and I have the hypotenuse. So adjacent and hypotenuse is a cosine function. Let's go ahead and let's knock that out. So the cosine of B is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Okay. And so we notice that even though we have the same two sides, I'm dealing with sine on one and cosine on another, which tells me I'm dealing with two separate um, angles within that triangle. So if I want to invert these, I'm just gonna take the inverse cosine. Okay. 
Awesome. And if I plug that into the calculator, I'm going to get B is equal to 21.99 degrees. And I get that. And so we can double check our work and say, hey, does 90 plus 68.01 plus 21.99 equal 180? And yes, it does. So we know that all angles within this triangle add up to 180. Doesn't necessarily mean we did it right, but it's a strong indicator that we did it right. So let's do one more example like that, except for instead of a tall skinny one, let's do a little, one a little bit shorter and wider. And let's call this a 38 and let's call this a 29. And I apologize about the light coming across the screen. I'm doing this video later on in the day because the first video that I recorded did not have any audio. So yay for me. Okay, so let's take a look at this. I have the two leg lengths and I know the fact that that central angle right here is a right angle. So how do I find these two angles, let's call this angle A, because it's opposite A, and angle B, it's opposite the other leg. I'm gonna do exactly what we did up here. I'm gonna consult my subcotoa and say, okay, to find A, I have the leg that is opposite, and I have the leg that is adjacent. So the one that deals with opposite and adjacent is tangent. So I'm gonna say the tangent of A is equal to the opposite, 29, over the adjacent, 38. Two steps after this, I know I need to get this A out, so I'm gonna invert it. So tangent of 29 over 38 is equal to A, which means A, if I plug that into the calculator, it's gonna be 37.35 degrees. And so real quickly right here, if I wanted to skip ahead and I was short on time, I could take 90, add 137.35, which gives me 127.35, and figure out what the difference between that and 180 is, and that will give me my B, not using anything further. But I wanna double check my work because I'm not sure if I did this right, I might've carried a number wrong, I might've written something wrong, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna calculate what B is, although you know that there's a faster way. Once you figure out A, subtract 90 and A from 180 to get you your B. Let's take a look at how to find our B. We're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna consult Sogoto. I have the opposite and the adjacent from B. So I'm gonna use tangent again. Tangent of B is 38 or 29. And now, one of the things that you might notice is that you're like, hey, I thought we had to use two different trig functions in order to use two different angles. Well, if we look at these two, I use tangent and I use tangent, what's the difference between the two? What do we see that's different between these two tangent functions? Yeah. If you're paying attention, you'll notice that I have 29 over 38 on this one. This one I have 38 over 29. So albeit they have the same name, tangent, they have a different relationship. So I'm dealing with a different angle. And so I know that I am okay to proceed to this next step. So the tangent of 38 over 29 is equal to B, which means that if I plug that in, the calculator, I'll get 52.65 degrees. So I get that. And then I can go back and double check. Does that plus that equal 90? Yes, it does. Plus that third angle is 180. All these check out. So that brings us to our last. Yep, yep. It's late in the day. Apologies. That brings us to our last circumstance. What happens when we have a negative side length? So if you're taking a look at any object, like let's take this journal for example, and I'm saying, okay, how long is this side versus this side if I were to draw a triangle? So I'm only dealing with that half. 
in what way can I get a negative side length? Well, I'm not exactly sure there, but let's see what happens. And now I'm kind of going to give part of the answer away by flipping over to our next sheet of paper, which is graph paper. Some of you might have already connected the dots and say, oh, now I see what we're doing here. And so this is scenario number three. Negative side links. How do we deal with those? Take a look. trouble focusing here. There we go. So if I have negative side links, let's give an example of something. I'm going to draw it a little bigger. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Let's call this a one, one, square root of two. Let's use something that we already know a little about. And I want to do two things. The first thing I want to do is I want one negative leg. The second thing that I want to do is I want to find two negative legs. And so what I want to do is I want to take this triangle. I want to figure out how can I rewrite, reorient this triangle so that I can have a negative length instead of a positive length. And so take a moment and see if you can't come up with a reasoning on your own. Okay, so you should have had a moment if you pause the video to, to kind of come up with a solution to how we're gonna tackle this thing. What happens if I have one negative leg? What happens if I have two negative legs? And so let's take a look. Now, we know the fact that, and this is gonna give it away for some of you. Let me do this in black. And now we know that our original triangle has a side length of one and one. So if I have a side length of one and one and the square root of two, that is my triangle. And now realistically, I'm not going to change the triangle at all, but I'm gonna change the perspective of how we look at this triangle. Again, one of the big themes in this class is we're gonna change the perspective of how we look at something and we're gonna get a completely different answer. So my first goal is to have one negative leg and there's two possible options here. My first option is if I wanna make this leg negative, I'm gonna flip the triangle upside down. I'm gonna leave this right here, but instead I'm gonna bring the triangle down right here. And that's still a one, but now this side length is negative one. And that is still the square root of two because distance is positive no matter how we calculate that. But my y value, which was my side or my leg, is now negative. So that's a possible answer for scenario one. What do you think another way we could answer scenario one is? Okay. Well, if you said that we could, instead of making the y negative, we could make the x negative. So let's flip the triangle over here. So this is still positive, but now this is negative. Again, my square root of two is still the same. And that's another way that we can answer example one. So we've got Two good examples right here. One negative leg and one negative leg. Now, how am I gonna get 
both negative legs. How do you think this is going to work? Well, he said, okay, well, if I make my y and my x negative, that means I'm going down over. I'm going to be somewhere negative four. It means I have a negative y and a negative x, and I still have the square root of two. And so this is my example for scenario two. So there we go. We have a triangle with negative side length values. And so that concludes today's section. We had three special circumstances. The first circumstance was when we had special right triangles, our 30, 60, 90 triangle and our 45, 45, 90 triangle. Our second circumstance we looked at is what happens if instead of trying to find a side length, we need to find an angle length, but we have to have two of those sides to find that angle. And we use that finding, or we find that using inverse trig functions. Um, and the third example is what happens when we have negative side lengths. What happens when a triangle is not measured positively, but negatively, and we looked at the triangle doesn't change, but our perspective of the triangle does change. So hope that goes well. If you have any questions, let me know.